Tragedy of the Butcher General Everyone knows this general as the Butcher. He is strong in battle, a skilled tactician. He has mastered the techniques of turning the specifics of topography and timing to his advantage. And he is outstanding, above all, in the skills of an individual warrior. Victory on the battlefield, however, does not lead straight to butchery. Many generals have been nicknamed for their military prowess. The Victorious, the Indomitable, the Invincible, but only one is known as the Butcher. Do you know why that is, Kaim? The general himself asks as he gloats over the vast mountains of corpses. Kaim does not reply. He entered the fray as a mercenary, but his exploits far outclassed those of the regular troops. For the general to call a man into his presence and speak to him face to face is apparently an honor beyond even most officers' wildest dreams. Not just from winning battles, the general goes on. That would be too simple. Just kill the enemy general. Take the big one's head and the battle's over, right? Kaim Calm, calm nods in silence. That is how this battle should have ended instead of continuing for three days. The enemy general proposed to surrender on the first day. He offered his head in exchange for the lives of his men and the villagers. But the butcher rejected the offer and continued his all-out attack on an enemy that had lost the will to fight, annihilating them in the process. The last day was used to burn down the forest into which the unre unresisting villagers had fled. The real battle doesn't end when you raise the victory song on the battlefield. If even one person survives, the seed of hatred lives on. I'm talking about the desire for revenge. Nothing good can come from leaving that behind. You must cut the cause of future troubles at the root. This is why the troops under the general's command killed the young men of the village after they were through examining the enemy troops. They also killed the unarmed old people. They killed mothers fleeing with children in their arms. They killed the children they stripped from those mothers' corpses. Do you think me cruel, Kaim? I do, Kaim answered, nodding. The officers gathered around, then went pale, but the butcher himself smiled magnanimously and went on. You didn't do any of those things, I gather. My job is to kill soldiers on the battlefield. My contract doesn't call for anything else. And I'm saying that that is a foolish line of thinking. The soldiers you killed have brothers and children. Do you plan on going living in fear of their revenge? That is sheer stupidity. If you wipe out the entire family, you can live without such worries, you see? The general laughs uproariously, and the surrounding officers all smile in response. Kaim, however, his expression unchanged, starts to walk away. Where are you going, Kaim? We are through talking, aren't we? My contract has ended. Never mind that, just wait. When the general says this, several soldiers stand to block Kaim's way. <clears throat> Listen, Kaim, I have reports of your performance from the front lines. What do you say to fighting under me now? From now on, you can exploit your marsh you can exploit your martial talents to the full. I'm not interested. What's that? I will never draw my sword on an unarmed opponent. The butcher is momentarily taken aback, then shock written clear with a shock written clearly on his face. You still don't understand, do you? You should try reading a little history. You'll find that hatred only breeds more hatred. This is what inevitably brings down even the most prosperous nations and powers, which is why I make absolutely sure to sever it at the root. If you ask me, General, war and butchery are two different things. What are you? The same goes for valor and brutality. You, a lonely mercenary, dare to lecture me? Let me tell you something about hatred, too, General. It doesn't evaporate from cutting off a life and remains in the earth in the clouds in the wind i have lived my life in that belief and i intend to go on doing so you stupid butchery is the work of cowards that is what i believe where do you get the nerve the general glares at kaim and his men draw their sword 
At that very moment, from within the scorched forest, comes the cry of soldiers. <clears throat> there are some. Five of them still left. No, six. Over there. They went that way. Distracted by the shouts, the general commands his men. Hurry! Capture them! Don't let even one of them get away. Hurry! Hurry! We can't let them escape. The men blocking Kime begin to fidget, and none of them thinks to stop him as he calmly walks away. Do you hear me? You must not let them escape. If even one of them gets away, I'll have your heads, all of you. The general call calls are clearly those of a coward. The butcher presides over many battles after that, and he burned countless villages to the ground, butchering all of their inhabitants. Then one night, something happened. The general felt a strange itching sensation on the back of his hand. It was different from an ordinary insect bite or skin e eruption. It was deeper down and felt like a kind of squirming. This is odd. He caught at his skin, but the itch would not subside. It was very strange. There was no redness or swelling or sign of a rash. Maybe I touched a poisonous moth. The general had burnt yet another village to the ground that day, surrounded by beautiful countryside. The village, in time of peace, had been extolled as the flowering hamlet. In keeping with the name, the villagers poured their energies into cultivating flowers of many hues, and the ones in full bloom in this particular season had the color of the setting sun. Indeed, the entire village looked as if it had been dyed the color of a beautiful afterglow. This was a village that the general burned down with flames far redder than any sunset. The villagers, who ran in circles begging for their lives, he killed, one at a time. Far redder than the sunset, far redder than the flames, was the blood that soaked into the earth. But this is how it always is. I didn't do anything special today. Shaking the hand that refused to stop itching, the general took a swallow of liquor. In that moment, it happened. Tearing through the thin skin of the back of his hand, a number of small, grain-like things emerged from within. No blood flowed. No pain accompanied them. Exactly the way the plant sprouts from the earth. No, the things that covered with the back of his hands before his very eyes were, unmistakably, plant sprouts. Horrified, the general, general took a razor to the back of his hand and tried to shave the things off. When the blade came in contact with them, however, they got, gave off sounds like human moans, sounds exactly like the moans of a human being dying in agony as his entire body is slashed by swords, or like the moans of a person who is being burned alive. Shut up, damn you! Shut up, you hellish! Holding the razor in one hand to shave the other, he could not cover his ears. His body was soaked in a greasy sweat by the time he succeeded in shaving the horrible things from the back of his hand. To salve his own anger, he shouted for the men who were supposed to be guarding him. Where the hell have you been? Sir? We should have come running when you heard unusual voices coming from my tent. That is your job as my guards. The guards gave each other puzzled looks and the first replied hesitantly to the guard. Forgive me, sir, we were standing just outside the entrance, but we never heard any such. The general glared at his guards, enraged, but after struggling to keep his welling anger in check, he shouted, Never mind, then. Get out. He was too upset to waste time on subordinates. Almost immediately, the itching attacked the back of his hand again, but this time it was not limited to his hand his flanks, his shoulders, his buttocks, behind his knees, his whole body started to itch. Alone again, the general tore off note guys and inspected his entire body in the moonlight, seeping through the roof of the tent. The things were sprouting from everywhere now, and some even had leaves beginning to grow on them. The general raised a soundless scream and began widely attacking the growths whenever, growths whenever he could reach them. Each one he cut from his body released a horrible moan. Horrible, horrible, horrible. 
His bedsheets turned green before his eyes, and soon the numberless sprouts were transformed into numberless human corpses. They covered not only his bed, but the whole earth, before they melted into the darkness of night and vanished. One sleepless night followed another in endless succession. The horrible things kept sprouting from his skin, whenever, skin, however much he cut them off. His ointments had no effects. He tried taking every poison-quilling tablet he could get his hands on, but nothing worked. He could not speak of this to his subordinates. If a rumor sprouted that strange plants were sprouting from the butcher's body, they would embolden his enemies and discourage his allies. One of his subordinates might even try to take his head at night. His cowardice had earned him the name of the butcher, and that same cowardice was what turned the general into a lonely, isolated man. He had no one he could tell about this. Each night the general would wage his lonely battle, though perhaps it could not be called a battle precisely. The things merely sprouted from his body and put up no resistance. When he took the razor to them, they would simply moan and fall away. What the general was engaged in on his own was less of a battle than lonely butchery. Several more nights went by. The sprouting continued with undiminished force. The single fortunate aspect, perhaps, was that the things only sprouted in places on his body where the general could reach with his razor. This could as well have been a curse, however. The general had no choice but to go on shaving the things precisely because he could not he could reach them. Precisely because he was able to perform the butchery by himself, he could not call for help. His lonely butchery continued. His sleepless nights continued. The general's flesh wasted away. Why is this happening? The general asked himself. Why did this have to happen to me? This is a time of war. I am here on the battlefield. I have to kill the enemy in order to survive, in order to give myself future peace of mind. I have to kill them all, both armed and unarmed. It is simple common sense. The general all but spit out the words. All I have done is the sensible thing in the most sensible way. This night, again, the sprouts emerged from his body. This night, again, the general had to shave them off. Again, the countless moans. Again, the countless bodies. Again, he heard the cock crow to announce the end of night. Again, the general passed the night without the comfort of sleep. The general's body, once superbly conditioned on the battlefield, withered away before his own eyes. But more than his body, his mind became unstable. He spent his days sprawled on his bed. Eyes open or closed, he could see images of his past scenes of butchery. Now he began to recall the words of a skilled but insolent mercenary. Hatred doesn't evaporate from cutting off a line. It remains. In the earth, in the clouds, in the wind. The general wanted to see that man again, to see him and ask him again, have I been wrong all these years? The man himself, a man of few words, would probably not answer his question. Still, the general wanted to see him again, that mercenary, that kind fellow. The sun went down, the night gradually deepened. As always, the itching started and the plants began to sprout. But the general, grasping the razor and fingers that now looked like withered branches, no longer had the strength to shave them off. <clears throat> his back began to itch. This was the first time things had sprouted somewhere beyond his reach, as if they had been waiting for this opportune moment. Sprawled on his bed, the general let the razor drop from his hand. Enough. I don't care anymore. The sprouts kept growing, creeping over him, and before long they had covered him completely. At that point, his back split open and an unusually large sprout emerged. By dawn, the sprout had fully matured, and before the cock crowed, it produced a single blossom, the color of an evening afterglow. Many long years have passed. Visiting the old battlefield, Kime finds a flower garden there. Blooming in profusion are flowers of clearly different shape 
and color than the ones along its borders. Beside the garden stands a stone monument inscribed with the, with the garden's history. In this place, the great general met his end. He was known as the butcher. He died suddenly one night, and from his body grew many flowering plants. These were evening flowers, a blossom unique to a village the general had burnt to the ground. An ancient legend tells us that the seeds of the evening flower lodge in the bodies of those who nourished, nourish hatred in their breasts, and the roots of the plants feed the flowers with the person's flesh. The garden's flowers, the color of the setting sun, sway in the gentle breeze. Kaim stands there for a time, gazing at the countless flowers given birth by hatred, before walking on in silence. It is said that in the very center of the garden lies a distinct, dis, disintegrating suit of armor, but no one has ever found it.